Oh, hello everybody. This is Brad Dyke. Um, I was kind of looking. I just rebuilt this entire Q-Rack set data center model, which is an enterprise cloud design. Um, and it thought, dawned on me that something I didn't really, I, I do go into it in some detail, but I don't go into it heavily detailed. But when I did my planning to rebuild this environment, I realized that I missed something I think it was valuable for to relay to everybody, and that was how the nature of heat, when you're dealing with environments like this, you see heat uh, in a 100,000 square foot room is like walking around in a mild tornado because the Liebert air handlers are moving tremendous amounts of air, there's a lot of interaction going on, and so on and so on, and you don't have micro zones like you have here and down here and over here and so on. Um, you have, you know, what's called in cold on the front, out back hot on the back, go up for the heat and cold always comes from the bottom. So those aren't things you have in your personal home lab. So how do you design it? to do passive cooling. Now, passive cooling means you're not relying on your HVAC unit, which I have right there. Passive cooling means look around what you've got. So let's do that. In this environment, you see over here some plastic shelving, and you see the racks, you see padding on the floor, and you've got concrete. You've also got workbenches that are constructed out of wood, wood panels, sectionals, plastics, a little bit of metal. But most of this metal, if you noticed, I put on the other side of the room, not near the racks. And again, here you go. More plastic and wood, more wood and plastic here too. There is some metal inside this base frame, but that's the closest piece of metal really to this. And you, you, I can just claim the um, metal framing back there because that's got a... Uh, a, uh, what do you call it, uh, it's a paint classification that is very unique. Um, because of it, it's caked on, and so it has a high level of insulation. So it doesn't grab heat. More importantly, it doesn't allow heat to make contact with the metal. So the real behemoths in the room are these two fully steel and uh, framed metal housings along with any metal that the servers represent and of course the airflow. Now I do have the panel sections for these in the back and I could use them to, to force the air up to the top but I don't want to do that and I'll explain why. So here this design is a little different than what we call the, the traditional stack on the traditional stack on is where every single server is making contact with the next server and so on and so on and there is not this gap in, the, in between. Now you can get away with that because you've got a large rack and you're going to compute level which means you can do cloud instances, VM or o, o, v, uh, OBO, V style virtualizations and your stack. So now you have uh, a, a ability to break these guys out so that they are not really contributing to each other's heat source. This little guy right here, he's doing a lot of crunching right now, and he's doing pretty good. Uh, the warmth on the top is not there, and the warmth on the bottom is not there, and they're not sharing their outputs on heat, so it's not an issue. You also notice that I've got a solid three feet of space between here the concrete and the walls. Now the walls have a class B style insulation that is designed to also act as somewhat like a ferrite cage and that's important too because heat, electricity and so on are key values at which you have to monitor in your environment. Lastly, and I think this is really important because when you're dealing with cool air you also deal with low levels of humidity so down there on the bottom you notice that there are my ground lines and they're grounded up to the electrical outputs so that we can make sure that these chassis are fully grounded in case something really happens. And that 
does potentially become an issue when you don't control your humidity levels to the right place. So the reason why I bring all of this up is that inevitably you're dealing with a poor man's lab, right? Even though this is a well-invested lab, it's still not, you know, it doesn't have a Liebert, it doesn't have a ch chilling tower in the back, it doesn't have uh, all the air conditioning style cooling mechanisms and so on and so on. So what you do is you really need to look what's close to it, like all of this plastic on the side. Plastic doesn't hold heat. Very poor conductor of heat. It's not a battery and it can't keep it. Over here you have a little bit of a battery, but it's so perforated and ventilated because it's a grilled style uh, set of metals that they're not really a problem either. The racks, on the other hand, they are clearly and concisely batteries, heat batteries to be specific. So again, the reason, the way I fought that was that you don't have to stack everything up in your rack on top of each other. You can allow for breathing spaces, like right here. You can see these breathing spaces allow micro air zones to exist and create what's called micro convection. So here we have a server that has plenty of airflow below and plenty of airflow on the top and it's running at 89 percent capacity constantly because this is a, a number cruncher but it doesn't get warm and more importantly because i'm using the micro convection fields between the layers this rack doesn't absorb the heat now if anybody knows their worth in salt when it comes to being in a hot data center everything is holding heat. Every single rack, every single metal door, anything that's made of metal will hold heat very well. What happens? Well, it takes as much time to cool the hot metals as it does to stabilize the server environments. So most of us in operations will cycle down what we call dev and op to take a big chunk of our storage functionality out of the equation heat-wise to give the, say, the data room a chance to cool down a little faster. But it will take you days to cool down a 30,000 square foot or better uh, deployment because heat convection is just that. Anything that can hold heat, you don't really want to have around. And if you've noticed, I have a gap between these racks and I do it on, on purpose because this allows me to be able to provide a buffer, more air convection, uh, to continue to work. But the other major saving grace, and this is a very important detail in regards to dealing with your own personal enterprise con class, and that basically means more than four servers, um, environment, is the floor. This is uncoated, untreated concrete six inches thick maybe maybe eight inches thick and it is cool it is really great it's a convection source all this surface area it's got these small little what you call ring effects between hot and cold and they really do allow you to bring down temperature in any time of the year and it actually will help you keep your expensive hvac in the winter time somewhat under control i live in ohio so I have a lot of high temperature, low temperature kind of variances. Now, what is not good for this environment, unfortunately, is plaster, or what you refer to as basically green board or um, plaster board, or basically any kind of style clay or a limestone combination boards. Uh, they store heat. They're convectioners, and that means it will pull the heat from the attic down to the upper area of the ceiling. So that's why you notice my HVAC is pointing to the ceiling. And it's keeping the ceiling and all of this rock, sheetrock you see under control. And uh, that is a real serious concern because there is a real full-blown roof up there with insulation. And that heat does come down and I have to be careful because I can put my hands up here on the top and it will be absolutely warm. 
on days of 100 degrees outside and my HVAC fights to hold 72 degrees. It actually does pretty good, but uh, you have to be, again, very careful about what you're doing. So this is some information that you can use as you're thinking about how to make my lab better. Carpet floors, not good. Carpet, not good. Closets, not really good either. Uh, yeah, they're great to get you started, but you'll end up having to rip them up and tear them up and try to get ventilation and all that through that. My recommendation is go to your basement or go to your, your garage, like a second garage if you have one, or get where you can find some concrete. And then you've got yourself some spacing. And 12,000 square, you know, 12,000, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, about 1,200 square feet is valuable uh, for a house. So, you know, this is not a very big room. This is basically uh, about 10 feet wide, about uh, 18, 19, 20 feet long. Uh, and it does everything I need it to do as long as I keep prospectively things like this device here out this way and everything else out on the outer edges. So that's my two cents worth. Um, hope you guys enjoy. I'm always here to help people learn. I will let you go and you have a fun summer. Thanks. Bye.